Hi there, I'm a cartoon, I know, it's awesome. My name is Alex and I'm an eight semester student at CETI's University. This video is for the International Business Promotion Strategies class led by Professor Maximo Cervantes. In this occasion, I'll be talking to you about Under Armour, an American sports clothing and accessories company, which since the 90s has been providing top performance clothing and accessories for athletes. Under Armour was founded in 1996 by Kevin Plank, a former Maryland football player. The young entrepreneur devoted his efforts to starting a company that could make a product that would be much more functional and comfortable to wear than cotton. The first national exposure for Under Armour came in 1998 when they provided athletic products for the Any Given Sunday movie. At the same time, the company placed a full page ad in the new ESPN Sports Magazine. In 2003, ESPN asked Under Armour to be part of their HBO series Playmakers. About this same time, the famous We Must Protect This House commercial was released. The commercial became immensely popular with football fans everywhere. Even these two were talking about it. In 2005, Under Armour went public, doubling their stock in the first day, reaching sales of over 800 million in 2009. Since it was founded, Under Armour has worked under the philosophy of innovating in everything they do. They have focused in niche markets that Nike, Adidas, and Reebok have overlooked and their line of products has grown to include a wide variety of sports and activities. To achieve success, they needed a combination of different factors, such as strong product positioning, quality products, and dynamic advertising. A great example is their Protect This House TV advertising campaign, which has become a symbol of what Under Armour stands for as a brand and is still used in much of its advertising. Through this type of advertising as well, as a well-executed public relations and promotions campaign, Under Armour has managed to build the athletic brand of this generation. They have sponsored high school, college, and NFL teams. They have signed endorsements with countless players in different sports such as baseball, basketball, football, lacrosse, NASCAR, swimming, and golf. They have organized national tournaments that are suppliers of the NFL. They are national distributors with various retail stores and have even appeared in video games. By integrating all of their sales, marketing, and promotional activities, they can increase the effectiveness of their budget as they strive to create and maintain their brand. Under Armour has been very successful in the cleated footwear market with its football, baseball, softball, and lacrosse shoes. However, they wanted to expand into other segments, such as rounding and basketball. In 2008, Under Armour decided to compete in product and market segments with other brands. Considering the company's wide range of products, this was a transition that was to be expected in the quest to attract even more consumers from different backgrounds. They overlooked the loyalty that consumers in this industry have for their brands since by the end of 2010 they held less than 2% market share for that segment. Still, by 2009 it already accounted for 16% of the company's overall revenue. Under Armour needs to find a way to create some brand loyalty which will help increase their market share for that segment, thus increasing company revenue. Despite its limited success with cross trainers and running shoes, Under Armour decided to continue to pursue the athletic shoe market by launching a new line of basketball shoes in late 2010. They did really good by creating a launch strategy, consisted in offering a medium priced product with different options as well as launching right at the beginning of the NBA and holiday shopping season. They took enough time to evaluate and test their shoes in different college and high school programs, making sure it would satisfy any needs. The strategy for Under Armour's new Micro G line was to have NBA player Brandon Jennings at the Milwaukee Bucks wear the Micro G black eyes and serve as the endorser for the new shoe line. Jennings was a young player fresh out of high school who played one year in Europe before being the 10th overall selected player at the 2000 NBA draft. He signed a $2 million endorsement deal with the company, which definitely does not compare with a 5 year $25 million deal signed by Reebok with the player John Wall. Still, it provided great exposure for Under Armour's new line of shoes. The Jennings endorsement was definitely a gamble for Under Armour's part since it did promote an image of new blood through the use of a new successful player to promote a new line of shoes, but still created a risk of endorsing a player who might not gain success until many years down the road. I definitely do believe Under Armour will continue to have success as a company in whole but they would benefit of trying to concentrate and innovate in those segments they have already dominated and expanding their market outside of their borders. Besides the United States, Canada and China, there's only one outlet store located internationally and it's in Scotland. By 2005, their international sales represented only 3.9% of their total revenue. Free 
created using Powtoon.